welcome to Scott Plays. Today I'm doing a game overview of the new Tim Powers game, Now Boarding. This is a cooperative pick up and deliver game with a real time element. In it you play pilots of a commercial passenger airliner. So let's take a look at the components. The first thing you notice is a number of um, punch board sheets. These mostly contain parts of your um, airliner. The, the planes are kind of modular. Um, there are wing pieces that have engines on them, um, a cockpit and a tailpiece for each player in the different player colours. Uh, there are then um, sort of fuselage pieces that indicate uh, where which routes you can take on the main board. Um, engine upgrades, more fuselage pieces that are seats, so they indicate how many passengers you can carry. There's quite a few of those. And then there are a number of tokens, uh, mostly weather tokens that um, either speed up or slow down your plane on particular routes and then a couple of temporary upgrades that you can get. Uh, there are also a number of little red wooden cubes. These are anger cubes. Uh, basically go on passengers if you don't pick them up and they get angry. Uh, some nice little plane meeples, one for each player, and then a whole bunch of cards. Uh, the majority of these are passengers' cards that have their starting airport and their destination airport on either side. Uh, each passenger also has a value that it's worth when you get them to their destination. Uh, there are some VIP passengers that have special effects and then a number of uh, weather cards that determine where the the weather tokens come out on the board. Uh, there are also then a number of timers because as I said it's two in fact timers because as I said it is a has a real-time component to it and then we have a I'm not really sure what to call this. It's a pre-flight and upgrade card, I guess. It's not a board, it's um, a card stock card. Uh, one side basically tells you how to set up the game for the different play accounts and how many um, uh, different types of cards you're going to have during the, the, the kind of three phases to the game, morning, evening, morning, afternoon and evening. And yeah, this tells you how many cards are going to come out and what effect they're going to have during those different phases. And then on the other side, you've got basically tables of all of the uh, upgrades that you can buy to you, upgrades to your plane that you can buy and how much they cost. And then we have the main central game board. Uh, this is a map of the United States with uh, various um, airports marked on it and routes between those airports. There's a couple of nice little landmarks um, dotted about as well. Uh, this is two-sided, um, two and three player on one side, four and five player on the other. Uh, but the only difference between the two is the four and five player has a few more airports and a few more uh, routes and, and that's basically it. And so that that is all the components. Um, the, the punch board is really nice quality. It has a uh, linen finish to it, um, the print quality on the uh, 
um, on the punch board tokens is really nice this is uh, particularly evident on the cockpit cockpit pieces um, there are various characters on there which if you have the um, Burgle Brothers game you'll recognize some of the characters like <laughs> some of the pilots uh, they are quite familiar looking characters um, similarly the the cards are really nice um, nice uh, not the heaviest card stock but pretty good um, I think the, my one criticism of the cards is the size of them they're sort of two maybe two and a half inch squares I haven't been able to find sleeves for these um, and I pretty much sleeve all my games um, if I can uh, so yeah it's a bit disappointing that they're not a standard size uh, Similarly, the uh, the punch board is nice, heavy punch board, really thick, um, sort of a couple of mil thick, really nice. And yeah, likewise, the the main board printed really nicely. Everything is, all the components are just uh, are extremely nice. So let's talk about how the game looks. The art and graphic design is by Ryan Goldsbury, who does most, if not all, of the illustration on the, the Tim Fowers games, um, and it's up to his normal standard. Um, everything is really clear from the, the main board to the uh, punch board tokens to the player cards to... Uh, this, uh, I, I guess, we call it a player aid. Um, I don't know if he does the rules layout, but that's also really clear. Um, illustration on the box, everything really nice. Has a kind of um, 60s, almost cartoonish, um, illustrative style to it, uh, which I really like. Um, makes the game very easy to play. So let's talk about how the game plays and how easy it is to learn. The game is played out over the course of a day. That day is divided up into three time periods, morning, afternoon and evening. Those time periods are split themselves into a number of rounds, um, and those rounds are further divided again into three phases. Uh, you have the a, a planning phase, a an action phase, and then a maintenance phase. During the planning phase, uh, you first put out new passengers face down in their starting airports. And then you discuss what you want to do during the action phase. The action phase is where the real time element and these sand timers come in. Depending on the number of players, you either have 15 or 30 seconds to carry out your plans that you discussed in the planning phase. You then move on to the maintenance phase, um, either when the timers run out or when everybody has completed everything that they want to do. In the maintenance phase, um, you are basically buying upgrades to your plane. Each passenger has a value associated with them. When you get that passenger to their destination, you gain that amount of money essentially. And that is basically the game. It's really simple. The, the rules are really clear. Uh, the game comes with this little information sheet that has a, a, a URL on it for a 
a rules video. I, I had no need for that. Um, the rules are really nicely laid out. Lots of illustrations and examples in it. The, the rules text itself is really clear. Uh, I, I got this game on Kickstarter and it arrived just before UK Games Expo so I took it along to that and basically opened it there and then and played it with somebody for the first time and we had no problem learning it and playing it. It was yeah very straightforward. So what do I think of the game? There are a lot of aspects to this game that I really like. The art is really nice, component quality is really good, the rules are really clear. And at the heart of this game is a really nice logistical puzzle. You've got to work out how to coordinate between all of the players to get the different passengers to their different destinations. You as a player might end up with two or three passengers that are all going to different places. So you and you don't have enough actions to be able to deliver all of them. So you've got to think, okay, I can get them part of the way, drop them off, someone else can come and pick them up and they can take them to their to where they're going. There's also an, a neat little um, mechanic with these anger cubes. If a passenger stays in an airport uh, till the end of the round, then they get an anger cube on them. If they are there for, I think it's three rounds, then they complain and they leave the airport and if that happens too many times, you lose. But what's nice is if you pick up a passenger that has anger cubes on him or her, those cubes are cleared and they're happy because they're on a plane. You can then take them to another airport, drop them off and go on your way and they're happy unless they get left there and then they start getting angry again. So yeah, there is this, as I said, logistical puzzle of trying to get passengers picked up, moved to an intermediate airport, dropped off for someone else to come in, pick them up, take them on whilst you're going somewhere else with other passengers. Um, that part of it is really nice. However, you have this real time aspect to it in that second action phase where it's timed. You've got to carry out all of those things. You've got to coordinate. Each player has to coordinate with probably at least one other unless they happen to have just passengers that are going to one place and then they can just go, okay, I know where I'm, what I'm doing and I'll just go there. But most of the time you are coordinating with at least one other player. And even in a two player game, which is the only player count I've actually played this at, it becomes chaos, particularly later in the game where you have more passengers coming out each round. Uh, and because the, the board itself is so small, it's really difficult to, to move your, your planes and then remember to drop passengers off and pick new ones up and then move on. And I've got to do that before you come in and then pick up the passenger that I dropped off to go off and then you go off to somewhere else. And that coordinating all of your actions during that time phase, that's where 
the game lets itself down, in my opinion. Um, it's just, there's just too much going on for 15 seconds. I think even if you extended it, even if you played 30 seconds of a two-player game and maybe 45 at higher player counts, I still think it's going to... It feels too rushed, and I kind of I kind of understand that that is kind of the idea behind the game that you don't have the time to do everything perfectly. But I can also imagine even with 30, 45 seconds at the highest player counts, and this goes up to five players, it's just going to be chaos. You cannot possibly get five different players doing things on the main board without people clashing and becoming losing synchronization it yeah it just doesn't work for me and that's a real shame because i i really like uh tim flowers games i i love burgle brothers uh i have fugitive which it's not my favourite game. It's not. It's not a terrible game. It has some um, issues itself uh, in the way it plays, but it's nowhere near as bad as this one. Um, yeah, this is just a it's just a real shame, and I'm I'm sorry to say that this is going on the for sale pile because. I can't see myself playing it, even again at two players. I just, I just didn't like it. It's well, actually no. Say I didn't like it is not right. I liked so many parts of it and the the core as core gameplay aspects. I I do really like that logistical puzzle, but it's that timed part. I don't think really works in this type of game. Um, I would have liked to have seen some other mechanism for limiting what the players can do during that action phase. And so yeah, as I said, it's going to be sold and that is a, a shame because it is everything else about the game is so nice. Um, I'm sure there are players that will really like it and hopefully one of them buys it off me and it, it finds a good home because uh, yeah everything else about the game is, is just so good so I hope you enjoyed the video and find it helpful in deciding for yourself whether this is a game for you or your gaming group I'd also like to invite you to join my group on Facebook uh, the link to that is in the description along with links to my google plus community facebook page uh, bgg blog and a geek list on bgg where i list all the videos that i upload so thank you for watching and i hope you join me for another video in the future